Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to talk about protocol spoofing. So what is protocol spoofing? Well, it's the misuse of a network protocol to initiate an attack on either a host or a network device. And there's three common types that we need to know about for the certification, and that's ARP poisoning, DNS spoofing, and IP address spoofing. Now we're going to talk about each of these on their own dedicated slide and we'll have a diagram as well. But understand before we get into them and we talk about each individual one is that you don't need to know exactly how they work because this is not an ethical hacking course. So let's go ahead and let's get into the first one where we talk about ARP spoofing. All right, so what is ARP spoofing, better known as ARP poisoning? Well, before we talk about what it is, let's do a really quick refresher. So remember that ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol, and what this protocol does on local area networks is it maps IP addresses to MAC addresses. So remember, at a LAN level, we are operating at the OSI layer to the data link layer, and we're utilizing MAC addresses. We're not utilizing routing and IP addresses directly. So any sort of communication that occurs is dealing with ARP and with ARP we are caching it on our network devices, on our computers and our switches and what that's going to do, it's going to map IP addresses to MAC addresses. So what is ARP poisoning? Well ARP poisoning is where a malicious user, and let's highlight our malicious user down here, our malicious user is going to get a hold of that ARP cache and they're going to modify it, that's why we call it ARP poisoning. So it's going to modify the network's ARP cache, and it's going to do this to take over a victim's IP address. And what this allows it to do, it allows it to receive any data that's intended for the victim. So if there's no sort of attack going on, we have a client computer here on our diagram. We have a server on the same network. When they communicate with one another, it's just going to go back and forth like it should because based upon the... IP to MAC resolution, it's going to know exactly what port that they're on. Well, if somebody is doing ARP poisoning or ARP spoofing, well, what happens is they become now a man in the middle. And this is a type of a man in the middle attack, which you're going to see actually uh, quite a bit in this section. And so rather than it going directly to the server and back to the user, what happens is that the client is going to be directed down from the switch down to this user and then it's going to go to the user back up to the switch and over to the server and then that's how the communication is going to take place in both directions and so now this man in the middle malicious user is going to be able to intercept any data that is destined for the client computer or the server so that's ARP spoofing or ARP poisoning so like I said, you don't need to know all the details of specifically how this attack works. Just understand it from a high level perspective and you'll be perfectly fine for the certification. So the next type of attack that we want to look at is the DNS spoofing attack. So we'll take a look at that on the next slide. All right, so let's now talk about DNS spoofing. But before we talk about what it is, let's do another quick refresher. So DNS, it stands for Domain Name Service. And it is a protocol that translates domain names into IP addresses. And in terms of browsing the internet, whenever you go to a new website, you're not going to know the domain name. And so what you have to do is you have to send a request to a DNS server, and they're going to resolve a domain name and an IP address for you. We're not going to get into the actual nitty-gritty details of how it works, because I'm assuming you have a high-level understanding of how it works coming into this course. So let's talk about what the attack is. So a DNS server, it holds all these different records that are going to resolve IP addresses and domain names. So what can happen is a malicious user, what they can do is they can attack this DNS server and they can alter DNS records to redirect you as a user to a fraudulent website where further attacks can occur. So in our diagram here, and let me get rid of all this other highlighting, and our diagram is within normal communication, we have a user that is going to want to visit a new website. They request that website from the DNS server, 
the DNS server is then going to send them to the actual website where the communication can occur. But if we have a hacker, a malicious user, inject a fake DNS entry that we see here, what will happen is that you'll no longer be sent to this actual real website from this DNS server. Instead, you'll be sent down to this fake website down here. So it's going to resolve you to this fake website. It's going to give you a fake DNS entry to take you over to this website. And typically these types of websites, let's say for example, this is a banking website because you need to do some online banking. Well, it's going to take you to a fake website that looks just like the real one. And if you don't look at the details of it, if you don't look at the domain name, then you're going to type in your banker credentials and then the malicious user via their fake website, they're going to have your credentials for the real website. So that's what DNS spoofing is, and that's how it works. Now we have one more different type of spoofing attack we need to talk about, and that's the IP address spoofing attack, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. All right, so now let's talk about IP address spoofing. So what is it? Well, IP address spoofing is an attack where a malicious user forges a packet source IP address. So remember within data packets, within the header, there's going to be a source and a destination IP address. So within this attack, a malicious user can forge the source IP address. And by doing so, what they can do is they can impersonate the sending computer. And I have a diagram here showing you this. So we have a sender over here on the left and their originating packets from them are gonna be in green. We have a receiver over here on the right. And you're gonna notice that Here's their original packets, but we have a man in the middle malicious user doing this IP spoofing. They get into the middle of this communication and they can forge the source IP address so the receiver thinks that the packets coming from them are coming from the sender. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see the original packets coming from the sender. You're going to see the modified packets or the additional packets that the malicious user, the attacker, has forged to send to the receiver. And so it's a means to send data to the receiver where they think it's actually coming from the original sender, but it's not. It's coming from the malicious user. And as you can imagine, this can be used as a vector, as a means to inject some malicious code into the receiver as well, or just to simply provide them false information. So that's IP address spoofing, and that's going to conclude our look at these three different types of spoofing attacks. So in summary, we talked about what spoofing attacks are, or in other words, protocol spoofing attacks. We talked about ARP spoofing, DNS spoofing, and IP address spoofing. So if you have any questions about this lecture, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.